ladies and gentlemen, Mike Nelson is a longtime friend of mine. He's an Army veteran. He has dealt with traumatic brain injury, multiple uh, TBI incidents. He has uh, deployed to combat multiple times in the global war on terror, has dealt with uh, debilitating migraines, long-term memory loss, insomnia, PTSD, direct injuries to his neck, knees, and back. And uh, he is married to uh, to his wonderful wife, who I'm also happy to call a friend, Christina. And they have four kids. And he is he is now like, and, and I don't know how much he wants to get into this today because we have some really critical news in his life we need to get into with his current legal challenges. Um, but I know Mike as someone who has gone wake surfing blind. And this is, I got to give a shout out, Mike. Sorry for taking so long with this intro, but Wake for Warriors, great organization. We got to meet up a bunch of other veterans there. And Wake Surfing, if you don't know what this is, yes, you can surf a wake without a rope. It's amazing. But what's even more amazing is that Mike Nelson did it blind. He was wake surfing by touch and sound. And it just it is a testament to what a badass he always was as a uh, you know, member of the military, Army Special Forces. But, you know, he's, he's some people will try, oh, he's partially blind because this, that, and, and I don't know, how, again, how much you want to get into this, Mike. But I saw him wake surf with, uh, with, a, with a mask on. It was a, a horse head mask. And it was <laughs> hilarious pictures. If you want, go way back on my Instagram. You can find those. We had a lot of fun with this. I first met Mike when he wanted to come out here to Gardenia to participate as, as, a, as a friend and a fan and bring his family out and get some hands-on time doing construction. I've never seen someone blind do construction like that, but he's, you know, he's just that kind of, Mike, I, I don't know if I can adequately, like in the 30 minutes we have left in the show, describe what a badass you are. But I'll just end with this. Aside from all of that, what he's doing now with his activism, you can see on his YouTube channel, Blind Justice. For someone with sight, going into a police department or other government facility and doing a First Amendment audit is frightening and challenging enough. Imagine going in with a walking stick and saying, I am going to challenge you saying that you can deny my right to record here. Just amazing work. And, and I've seen some of his videos where like, you just watch for you know, 20, 30 minutes going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. This is Mike freaking Nelson. So Mike, um, it, with all of that said, any, anything else I need to add to your introduction here? Dude, that was uh, very grandiose. <laughs> Thanks for having me on the show, Adam. I, I think, uh, well, the other thing I, I want to point out that I love about Mike is that he has come through so much and is still just, it, it has such a beautiful Zen spirit of, of love and, and non-attachment. And, and every time I've gotten to hang out with him, you can hear it in his voice. I mean, I sound like the average aggro asshole who's still in the Marine. He sounds like more of a hippie than I do. There's such a beautiful tone of, of peace and wisdom in his voice now. And I should say one other thing. When he came out here for a build party, he hosted uh, daily guided meditations. That was his contribution to our potluck camping party. But, Mike, you are facing pending charges in both Guilford and Rockingham counties right now where judges in both courthouses have violated federal law and your rights as a disabled American for denying you equal access to the courts. And you have something coming up on Wednesday related to this. We want to make sure we got you on before your next legal encounter, but please give us the backstory. How did, how did it come to this point? Yeah, sure. So we, uh, you know, we're, we like to travel around. We were in Mexico for about five months last year and uh, we decided to, come to North Carolina to be near some family for a little bit, let the, the small the small children grow up around some aunts and uncles and grandparents. And that was end of last year. So we didn't have a home uh, and we were trying to find a house. We got a, a good line on foreclosure list being located at the courthouses. 
So I went to the, the couple county courthouses and asked, you know, where the clerk's office was so I can go get a copy of these uh, foreclosure lists. That's the only place they're kept. They're kept in person, physical copy. They don't put them online. And I was denied access to these courthouses um, from Go. Like, they wouldn't let me in because I uh, have different assistive devices I use to help me uh, navigate and take notes. And they have a ban on electronics in courthouses here in North Carolina. So wait, you got to explain. You got to explain what you're talking about, because most people just assume like walking stick, listening device. Yeah, yeah. But you have you have a really cool. It's like a Bluetooth vibration thing built into your your glasses, right? Uh, no. So it's not the glasses. Um, so I have this headset that I'm using. Um, the noise cancellation, which is really good for the car when the kids are loud. But I have this other headset that's a um, bone conducting headset. So it loops around your ear. And then the little right. part vibrates your jawbone, and then it goes to your ear bone. So you can still have your ears unobstructed. I can still hear obstacles and hear feedback from my cane and different things like that, traffic while I'm crossing roads. Uh, so that, that helps me when I'm using my navigation on my phone uh, or if I'm having somebody look through my phone and give me pointers of where to go and where, where things are. I also have different little uh, sonar device that I wear on my, my chest rig that has the GoPro, uh, and the GoPro – is recording is just a one button click and that records you know the audio video if i'm running into obstacles or i'm in a situation like you said going into government buildings where they're already kind of not so friendly um especially if i'm going in and, and trying to ask for records and things like that so i'd use that as my primary sorry, sorry Mike. I, got, I gotta interrupt with one other question here because you're doing this uh, what, when, when did all this happen uh initially we came at the end of last year, 2019, okay, trying so to get access to foreclosure records. Yeah. So it was pre-corona now. Now with, with corona, yes. do you have, is there some weird extra challenge? Like, because I went to a courthouse once during corona. I got the thermal scan on the forehead and reminded that I have to wear a mask. Is there any extra, like, challenges for you with, with your situation? Uh, so I, I'm not sure yet with the uh, courthouse, what their protocol is for corona. Um, but... Different places do have that mask uh, mandate. The the governor here in North Carolina has one out. And so far, we haven't had any problems going into stores and going into different places. Um, if, if question, you know, I do have a medical exemption. Like, I need to be able to breathe uh, for not right. just the brain damage. But, but like, in the grocery store, for instance, I went when I was visiting Texas a couple weeks ago or this last week, or I got somebody to assist me getting my groceries and they they first had a discussion like with the manager it's like well can we allow you to be in close proximity to one of our assistants if you're not wearing a mask and i'm like well i don't see why not i'm not going to touch him he's going to be his six feet away he has his mask like while we're walking through like i was trying to remember my list of things and i smelled bananas like ooh, can we get some of these bananas because i you know I, I forgot to get bananas and he's like yeah and but if i had a mask on i probably wouldn't have been able to smell you know the bananas that we walked by so just just even on the sense of uh having one sense knocked out i rely on smell and touch and hearing a lot uh just for everyday things so the next thing coming up is that on your court date on wednesday you're being asked to show up without any of your devices i mean it's like come to court but don't hear us it yeah. sounds like a setup yeah, so it's not being asked. It's an order. The judge uh, right. at, a, at a Rockingham County <laughs> District Court, the judge's name is Chris Freeman, and he um, wrote an order. He, re he wrote a letter replying to my ADA, my American with Disabilities Act, request for reasonable modification to allow me use of my everyday devices my, that I use to take notes. So my GoPro, I have an audio recorder, my phone that uh, does more than just take notes. It does um, – it reads signs. It can read documents if they want me to sign something. It has notes on it that I can access with my headsets so it doesn't bother the court, you know, if have this thing reading really fast out loud. So, so the, the headsets are on that list of things that I requested to be uh, permitted in the court, and they denied that. So his letter denied it, and then he went on to threaten me to say that he'll hold me in criminal contempt if I show up and use these devices in court. I'm sorry. There's just a certain amount of insanity to this, but is so like when I go to court and 
you know, they, they always have signs, you know, you can't have your cell phone or, you know, leave it in a, like there's some federal, I've been to a federal court where you would have to actually leave your cell phone and any other electronics. They had a little wall of lockers, you know, like, you know, small ones for right. personal electronics to go in. And it's always like they're, they're trying to protect the secrecy of the court, right? They right. want, you know, and it, it, we don't say in America, we have secret courts except when we're referring to like the actual really completely secretive one, but it's sort of like all courts in America that don't allow continuous video recording are somewhat secret, right? Yeah. No, you're spot on. And, uh, and so in his explanation in the letter, he's, he's required under uh, state and federal law to, to explain why or how, allowing my request would make a fundamental change to the proceedings. And he doesn't, of course, yet the burden of proof is very clear in the ADA. It says that, that the one making the denial has the burden of proof to explain how allowing the accommodation would, would fundamentally change the operation. And he doesn't. He just makes the claim that it would be a fundamental change with no explanation given. So that's another way that he's violating state and federal law. But the, the most you know, egregious, the most uh, head spinning one is that he's going to hold me in criminal contempt if I do try to get equal access to the courts on Wednesday. So basically, you know, if I don't go to court, they're going to arrest me. If I do go to court and demand equal access and equal rights, then they're going to arrest me. And uh, so that's currently where we are. So what do you think is going to happen on Wednesday? Uh, you know, I think that's I think that's probably what's going to happen. We uh, we're trying to get some people out uh, to protest with us tomorrow which is tuesday and and wednesday and uh hold up some signs and let the people there know that we're not going to take it <laughs> and, so uh, so at the, at the critical time the wednesday <clears throat> i mean it's is it is it scheduled for 9 a.m wednesday <clears throat> I think they, we don't have an exact time yet but they've got me late i think it's probably gonna be afternoon my lawyer is from out of county so he's uh they usually put the out of county lawyers at the end so they've got me probably after lunch i'm guessing Okay, so you go into the to the courthouse, you go through security, you've got a device on you. What happens? They won't they won't let me through security. So we already tried to go um, to handle this matter several weeks ago, and we put in the ADA request over the phone because we found out they had an electronics ban. So we called the disability coordinator at the courthouse. She denied it over the phone, which is illegal. Um, we went the the next day to the court uh, date, and the this is this is this is great. This is gold right here. We have video of this. There's a lady outside because of their Corona protocol. Um, she said she works for the district attorney's office, but she wouldn't give me her name. <laughs> so she first she said, "Hey, you're, I'm checking you in. Here's a waiver you need to sign. You need to waive your right to counsel." And I'm like, "Well, no. What? One, I can't. Yeah, one, I can't read that. Two, I'm not <laughs> going to waive any rights. I'm going to retain all my rights, including my disability rights." And her response is, "Well, that's not how it's done here." <laughs> Well, we're going to freaking change that then, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, so that's her response. And then I said, well, are you going to allow me in with my assistive devices? Um, you know, this is outside. This is on the steps, you know, of the courthouse. And she goes, no, you have to you have to leave those out here in order to get access to the court. I'm like, well, I can't. I, I need these to, to function, to have to be able to take notes and to have my notes for the proceeding. And, and to have it read documents to me and all these things. And she's like, well, we can't allow that. I'm like, okay, so you are, I'm not allowing me access to the courts. But to be clear, you as a member of the district attorney's office are preventing me from going in to appear before the judge. And so we got that on record. And then um, what, guess, you can probably guess what the district attorney did uh, when I didn't show up. Warrant. Yeah, he, yeah, he asked the judge for a failure to appear warrant. <laughs> <laughs> when his when his associates in his office were the ones that would not allow me access to appear, so the, the, you can already tell you know, the entrapment games that they're playing. Luckily, the judge didn't go for it um, that day, but then the judge turns around and issues this threat, you know, of, of criminal contempt if I try to gain access to my court date on my court date Wednesday. So, yeah, we reported this to the sheriff's department, and uh, that we got some lieutenant who basically laughed at me and. Because it's a, it's not just federal law, but it's it's codified in the state law. It's a NCGS 168A. It's the anti-discrimination law in North Carolina. 
And I'm like, hey, you guys don't have jurisdiction over the federal law, but you do have over the state law. And I brought it up to him. I'm like, this is what's happening. This guy, Chris Freeman, is violating the law. He's threatening, making threats against me for simply exercising rights. And uh, so what are you guys going to do about it? And he's like, well, we're not going to do anything about it. You need to talk to your attorney. And I'm like, okay. So we have <laughs> we have that audio, which is, you know, priceless. But we'll have to wait to find out what happens Wednesday. So, I mean, I, I hope that you can uh, – I mean, I'm, I'm kind of torn on this one, Mike. Obviously, I support you doing this. But seeing this through all the way – in these in these particular areas of North Carolina, where you have a lot of weight of public support on the state that you're up against, yeah, it's a major uphill battle. Like even if you win your case, and you you get to tell them, "Ha, see, I was right," and now you better be more respectful of Americans with disabilities and giving them access to your court, or you're going to have trouble, Mister. You know that's that's nice. And I I mean I've done civil disobedience that's had you know, major policy effect and stuff that's just been symbolic. So with this, it seems like you're in a unique position to really follow this one through and, and change the procedure and, and not just be a, a pain in the, the butt to the system, but bring about, you know, real reform in a part of the country that desperately needs it. How do you see this as an activism endeavor? Yeah, absolutely. That's the, you know, the first priority is that is well ideally they don't jump me again because i didn't tell you the other part of this backstory is this this charge right, they have against right. me is 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 activism related so the health they department. yeah so they attacked me in the health department in a neighboring county and when through that they they knocked me out i came to some five hours later but we found out they they took me to the magistrate they took me to jail they took me to the magistrate took me to jail they tossed me outside unresponsive and some emts found me some hours later took me to the hospital i found a brain bleed in my head Right. So that was a different county. And that's there's still charges pending with that. But through all that, they didn't positively ID me. Fast forward two weeks after that attack, we're here in this little small town in the neighboring county, just sitting with Christina, who you mentioned, like I'm sitting in a passenger seat in the van on, on church property in a parking lot, just talking with her on a Friday night. And the cop comes up, threatens to smash her window out some 25 times unless he identifies everybody in the car. Well, she already showed him her ID. And I wouldn't provide any ID. I don't have a driver's license because I can't can't drive. So he he just was just lost all composure and was going crazy. Pulled, ripped us out of the van, put us both in handcuffs. Eventually, they arrested me and charged me with resisting an officer simply because I wouldn't give up information. Um, so that's the charge that this is supposed to be about Wednesday. So from get go, it seemed like they because of activism. And this little small town police force wanted to show the big city guys how to how they can positively ID somebody, uh, which ultimately they did in jail after uh, torturing me, after stripping me naked, taking away my hat and glasses, throwing me in a bright room, uh, completely naked for like 20 hours. Um, yeah, so that's the precursor to this. And the threat is now to get thrown in the same jail if I show up with my devices. Well, I hope you're in a really good position to get some get some money out of this too i mean you should have a lawsuit on your hands when i say i'm torn my my only re i mean i, I i'm torn because you know I, you might be you know fighting an impossible battle here but i don't think yeah. you are i think you, I, I i think well see here's the thing in, in the sense that it's impossible like here's here's my sort of you know worst case reasonable scenario pessimistic outcome from this is that they drop all the charges against you because you're more trouble than you're worth, but they shut you out of any kind of remedy, right? Right. I mean, that's that seems like the, just the most likely you know, worst case sort of outcome. More positively, I think it's very reasonable that you could actually get some change in court policy and you could win a significant victory for uh, disabled Americans' access to courts. And, and because you shared those stories, I think people who don't know, like people, people see me go to jail and it's like, you know, I'm, I'm more or less healthy and intact from, from my service, you know, a couple screws loose, but you know, otherwise like I can, I can, I can physically hang like, it's not going to bother me to do a couple nights in jail, but it still bothers the hell out of me when, you know, they don't feed you or right. they, they, you know, do they, they engage in these sort of like petty, it's not, you said torture. And I, I don't want to dispute that because it's torture, but it's like petty handling, torture and harassment. 
The thing is, if you have disabilities like yours, you know, you look at, uh, you know, a lot of the, the murders that cops engage in, it's, it's sort of like, oh, well, we didn't realize he was disabled or we thought he was a punk, you know, you know, or, or right. just something like that where they don't recognize how vulnerable someone is. And when you particularly take these risks, you are, you know, on the front lines as a, as a civil disobedience warrior in a whole other way because you go with that vulnerability. But one of the things that comes out of this, and I think is so powerful in your videos, and, and uh, you know, when we started talking about this, I got to see some of the recent ones, but even some of the old ones, you see like security guards assaulting you. And yeah. they, I guess they assume that you're pretending to be blind, you know, pretending that you, but you just, you are by virtue of being a blind veteran, you know, and, and everything that goes along with that for you in a real unique position of exposing just how evil and hypocritical law enforcement. Yeah, no, you're, you're spot on. I think, um, you know, I've, I've done my research on, on the applicable laws and the ADA and, um, you know, when, when I'm having a good day as far as brain activity goes and, uh, mobility, um, a lot of times I'm not, I don't go out specifically seeking these engagements. Like this, this started here trying to find a house for our, for our family. And, uh, that's kind of, where it happened, the, the attack on me and my wife, where we were running our own business, not activism related at all. Um, but but now they have our full attention. And, and so we're trying to bring as much attention to the situation as we can through our fellow activist friends like you and, and others and, and just trying to bring the spotlight to it. Like we know what's going on. We know the applicable laws. We know it's not just illegal, but it's immoral. It's unethical. Uh, and we're trying to expose this and change it. And they know it. They, they, the, the, the criminals that are doing this in the state, are they know they're being watched. They know they're being recorded. They know it's being publicized. And they're still going to do it to me. So what are they doing to the disabled population when they don't know their rights, when they don't know the laws, when they aren't recording, when they don't know how to articulate it, how to articulate how to make an, an ADA request? Like how, how, how many people day in and day out get abused and have their rights trampled and get violated, get beat up, get tortured, get killed? you know, in custody and by the courts because yep. they don't know, you know? So yeah, absolutely. That's the primary like thing we're trying to change here is just exposure on how to, there's no training. Like, and so far in any of these places, the police department, they denied my, my disability request. They don't have any training on it. They don't have a, a specific person that makes sure the city's trained on it. The County level, same thing. You shouldn't need training, Mike. You shouldn't need training for this. I right? agree. I mean, Hey, simple. someone's disabled. Fucking accommodate them. You're the cops. Yeah. You're the government. Yeah. You're the court system. Really? We need we but need to write I, this shit down. It's fucking you embarrassing. And I know, you and I know that they that they require it. They re, they're order followers. They're 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 conformists. They have to have somebody with with power or authority that they believe in, bigger than them, telling them to do it, or they won't. They just won't do the moral ethical thing. They have to be told and and threatened like with their job or losing pay in order to do it. They just won't do it on their own because when they do, when they do step out on that branch, then they are let go from the organization. Then they say, oh, well, you're not. <laughs> how dare you try to help this disabled person? You know? Yeah, it's yeah, it's 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 disgusting. It's pervasive. It's all the way through the system. So we're trying to change that absolutely for disability rights, not just in the court system, but through the police engagements and um, through just government interactions, but also with the courts specifically. This whole locking it down, like you said, secret courts and not having access to, to make your own recording of it. I think Michigan recently last year made a opened up their courts for recordings, like said that they are required to allow people to make their own recordings in Michigan. Some states you can do it. I think New Hampshire, you can record some places in Washington state. You can record in lower courts and well, the without, without retaliation. The, the technology has just got us to the point where it's it's just an expectation. People are coming together. Yeah. It's important. Why yeah. can't I make a video? Video is easy. It's everywhere. Why can't I make a video oh. of this? What are you hiding? I'm I'm super stoked with. Uh, I know some there's there's this probably open up another can of worms. You can we can shelf this discussion for another time. But Neur, the Neuralink um, company with Elon Musk. Yes. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, wearable implants. It's like implanted. Like they're he, his initial. Um, Human testing is for people like like me, you know, people that have brain damage and have vision loss and memory loss and hearing loss, yeah. and they're, they're they're talking about being able to recover that. And even if we have like you know eye implants, like 
wearable or implantable recording devices, like you can't stop it. They, they're in their death throes. I think the, the government is uh, they're in these death throes of trying to strangle and stifle out recording and, and journalism because it, it's it, it, the genie's about to be out of the bottle completely. And they they're just trying to keep it in as much as they can. Yeah, no, it's it's nice to see that at least in some places, in order to maintain their racket, they have to give up a little bit of the secrecy of it. And I think yeah. what you're doing is is absolutely critical work. It is it is life saving work, you know, in a, in a direct, immediate way. Because uh, I, I, I suppose among blind Americans, you're pretty fucking rugged. Most of them are not so lucky as you to be able to go through this. And and I felt like this with a lot of my civil disobedience. If I can go and take the beating so that someone else doesn't have to, I'll do it. And yeah. with the actual beatings that you have taken and the health uh, damages that you have suffered as a result of your activism make mine look insignificant by comparison. I got to give you all the respect in the world for that. Finally, Mike, we're just at about time. If you have any closing thoughts, of course, feel free to get them in. But for ways that people, especially in North Carolina, can connect with you and be there to support you in court Wednesday, what's the easiest way for you to connect with them? Uh, probably the easiest is to email us. It's insight is free at gmail.com. So insight, like inner knowledge, is like the verb to be and free, like not slave. Insight is free at gmail.com. You can also reach us on the YouTube page or YouTube channel, Blind Justice. We do have a Facebook page by the same name. And there's a group for, for if you actually want to get more involved. Um, so we're asking people if they want to come protest with us Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, if you want to share this with uh, other media stations to, to let them know what's going on with this, this district court judge going crazy in Rockingham County, North Carolina. Um, yeah. And, and if you want to call in, there's different phone numbers we have posted for you to call in to try to dissuade these people from doing more violence against me for simply trying to go to court. Awesome. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Mike. It's always an honor to talk to you. I'm glad to be in a position to help you out a little bit right now. I hope you can come back to, to Juniper Wood Ranch and fight for our yeah. freedom here. And, yeah. uh, you know, somewhere, somewhere where we're starting from a better point than North Carolina. But, Mike, you know, finally, I, I got I to gotta end with this. Can you tell me about your T-Rex, please? <laughs> oh, man, you're going to make me do it. I forgot that I was wearing this shirt. Okay. <laughs> Did you, do you <laughs> do you not uh, remember when you, when you put on your t-shirts you grab them out of the drawer you have to ask christina what am i wearing today honey <laughs> yeah. thank you so much mike uh is, is right. christina there can yeah, i can i say hi right. to christina well she's she's not in the room but okay yeah. well tell give give her and all the kids a big hug for me and tell them i miss him and we'd love to have him back here in juniper wood and uh, I, I hope that people in our audience, especially those in North Carolina, if you know anybody in that area, that you can get out and support Mike Nelson. But go check out his YouTube channel. Subscribe. Uh, he's got 31,500 subs right now. Uh, YouTube.com slash C slash Blind Blind Justice. I think if you just go to YouTube.com slash Blind Justice, you can find it. Obviously, a uh, very beautiful, distinct brand. And uh, please, you know, you, sh you should be plugged in with what Mike Nelson is doing.